So for our demo, we're gonna use the S2200 two port Smart G2 charger. Keep in mind that the interface is essentially the same between the three chargers that we have talked about before. I'm gonna go ahead and flip the switch on the back to turn on our charger. After a moment, we'll go to the main screen. And here we're just gonna go ahead and talk about the interface overall, and then we'll start charging some batteries. So here we are with the main screen, and you have these four buttons on the front to navigate, and you have two buttons here to switch between the two channels. When you're on one channel, you'll see that it has this red highlight when you're on the channel that you're selected. To go into the menu, you just press and hold this kind of play button looking button here. And here you can change the parameters and tasks. So tasks wise, you can change it from start to charge, discharge or storage charge. To exit, just hit the kind of back button looking button there. And then you have these up and down arrows to select between the different parameters. Here you can change the LiPo type or battery type that you would like to charge. Same with cell count, current, and then you can start the charge there. If you have a smart battery plugged in, here you'd be able to change smart battery settings, and then you have system settings below that. Let's briefly go through that. Here you can change the backlit of the screen, the volume of the beeper, the completion tone. So this one's important because if you wanted to keep beeping after a battery is done, you would leave it on repeat. So after the battery is done charging, it'll beep every 30 seconds or so to alarm you that it's done, or you can make it so it only beeps once. You can change the language. You can do a self test. So if there is a problem with the charger, you can run a self test and it'll give you a code. You can call up our product support and they can tell you what's wrong with it or tell you to send it in for service. And then this one's really important, charger history. So right below system settings, you have charger history. This is nice because it'll tell you kind of what the charger's been through, through its whole life. How many cycles it's done today, how many cycles my charger has done in total. I've charged 54 packs on this so far. And then the input voltage and the charger, charger's temp. Simple enough. Okay, let's start charging the batteries. So first off, let's charge a smart G2 battery. This is the simplest way to charge and probably the most uh, the easiest and the fastest. Simply flip the slider to the connector of choice. This is an IC3 connector. We'll plug it in, give it a second, and it'll start telling us that it's going to initiate the smart charge. Give it a few moments, and there you go. It starts charging the battery automatically into the parameters that it had already saved onto the internal chip on our battery. After a few minutes, it will tell us what the charge time remaining is here. It does need a few moments to essentially kind of calculate what that'll be. And it'll tell you how many milliamps is put into the pack over the period of the charge. Other things that you can do while this is plugged in, if you press and hold the play button or the start button here, is you can adjust the current, you could stop the charger, or you can see the battery's history. This battery's only had one cycle on it and its current internal temperature is 96 degrees or 37 degrees Celsius. If you wanna change the settings on the smart battery, you will have to stop the charge. So I will go to, you can either hit the back arrow to stop or you can go to stop in the menu. And then if we go down to smart battery settings, here's where we can adjust the auto storage time, the charge current, what our charge voltage is. So if we want the charge voltage to actually be lower than 4.2 or 4.1, you can go to those parameters and you can adjust what the storage voltage is. That is between 3.9 volts and 3.7. You can also see what the battery's history is. We can go there, we can see that again, it only has that many cycles on it and the battery's internal temperature. Also, you can see the fault log on the battery. This battery, because it's fairly new, is not gonna have any fault logs, but let's check out another battery that will. All right, so let's go ahead and plug in my Smart G1 battery. And this one, you do wanna plug in the main lead and the balance lead for it to start. Just like our G2 pack, it will automatically start charging once it recognizes both plugs are plugged in. So now that we've got our more worn out G1 battery plugged into our G2 charger, let's check out some fault locks. So on here, we're gonna stop the charge and then we're gonna press and hold our play button or our start button. And we're gonna go down to smart battery settings. 
And here we can go to fault log. This battery's had two faults. Each one is gonna be in order, essentially, of when it happened. Fault one happened the latest or furthest time ago. And you can see I over-discharged the cells, C cell one, C1, cell two, C2, and cell three at that point. And then fault log two, I had overcharged this. All right, so G2 batteries and G1 batteries are super simple to charge. So now let's go ahead and charge a non-smart battery. Right here we have an E-Flight 3-cell 3000 milliamp pack. Again, like we said, the EC connectors, the blue older E-Flight connector, is backward compatible with the IC connectors. So this EC3 connector will plug straight into our IC3 connector on the face of our charger. And then you do want to plug in the balance lead. So balance leads, those will go into the far left with the negative wire being on the left. So now that we've plugged in our non-smart LiPo battery, it has automatically detected a few things. It's detected that it is a LiPo because you plugged in the balance lead, and it's detected that it's a three cell battery based on the voltage and the balance lead that's plugged in. One thing that you'll need to select and set up is the current of the battery, the charge current. Here it says 6.6, .6, which is the last charge current that we used. But for this battery, we're gonna wanna choose three amps because it's a 3000 milliamp pack. Simply hit the start button on current and scroll down to three amps. You can press and hold to quickly scroll through or you can tap to go up and down one increment at a time. Tap the play button or the start button to start and hit start and now we're charging. Simple enough. Much like with the Smart G2 battery or G1 battery, you'll see the charge current going into the pack. You'll see how much charge capacity has been put into the pack. But last, we will only see a total charge time you will not see the time remaining because it does need to be a smart battery for it to be able to calculate that parameter. Beyond that, you'll get the same battery level bar there, and when it's done, it will beep at you just like it did with your G2 packs.